Hey everybody, I'd like to invite the Elton football team up here. Come on up Coach Feeney. Come on Zelman. I'd like to invite the whole group up here and representing the team. Thank you. Elton High, class of 63. Class Okay, the group is the group is going to lead us to the pledge of the flag tonight. All right, ready? Here we go. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I, I asked uh, Coach and a few of the players to come tonight and uh, pump us up a little bit for. Uh, we've got a huge football game on Friday. We're playing, uh, I'll let the coach tell you, but we're, we're playing Liberty. Go ahead, coach. Uh, yeah, we have a state quarterfinal game this Friday night, 7 o'clock. Um, we are uh, very excited to be where we're at right now. Uh, the guys have worked extremely hard to uh, get us in this position. Um, you know, we try to pride ourselves on being representatives of the town by, you know, reflecting what Elkton you know, what, what else the values? Hard work, community, um, and respect for our, our, our town and for each other. And that these guys, you know, bigger than football sometimes, that's what the, the beauty is when I step back to coach and look at this collection of guys. Um, they do that. They represent the town as well as you can ask teenage boys to do. And, um, you know, I'm, we're extremely proud of them. And um, I know that they're going to put their best foot forward on Friday night to uh, get us one step closer to, uh, you know, that game down the road, which we're not talking about. That's, that's where we're at right now. So, um, you know, as far as getting people out to the game, I mean, it's, it's a big game. Uh, the team that's coming to town, Liberty High School out of uh, Carroll County, they, uh, they're good. They're, they're a very good football team. And uh, we, we had a great week of practice this week so far, getting prepared for them. But uh, it's going to take, you know, that, that 12th man never hurts. So if we could get, uh, you know, the town out, support us, it would mean a lot to these young men. They feel that energy. I, I, I see it in them. I, I can feel it, you know, when they're out on the field. When that crowd gets loud, they just seem to rise up. And uh, it would be great for the sport this week. Well, Coach, I can tell you that we're very proud of uh, the efforts. Uh, it means a lot because uh, you guys are out there not only representing yourselves, your high school, but you are representing the town of Elton. And we really, really appreciate everything that you're doing. And just let us know what we can do for you. Uh, we're here for you guys. Uh, if there's ever been any issues or any problems, please make us aware of them. We're there to help you. This is the future here, and, and we're in good hands. Perfect. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Perfect so much. Thank All right. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go go melts. We are. Let's see what's here. Let's get ready to say it. Night night, let's get ready to say it. Okay. Welcome everyone to the uh, November 20th meeting. Uh, minutes of the November 6th meeting. We have a motion to approve. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Financial report and payment of the bills? We have a motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on the financial report? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Dwight Tomey, representing uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jason Preston, to come on down if you'd like and tell us about this uh, petition for annexation. Uh, <coughs> this is a um, flat of the property. I 
tell you, their sad tale of low. Um, you may recall when uh, the development that was built up next to them, the townhouse development, I can't remember the name of it, it started out called Baker's Hill, but I have no idea what its name is now. Hickory Knoll. Hickory Knoll, thank you. Was uh, developed, um, the developer actually reached out to the five or six homes there along Route 7 and said, Do you want to annex in while, while they're annexing in and connect to the town water and sewer system? It might be a wise thing to do, and none of them would do it at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, subsequent to that, these nice people bought the house that's sort of closest to the entrance. Is it on this side of the entrance <laughs> heading up the hill? Yes. Uh, and, and this is going up Old Baltimore Pike. And their septic system is, is failing. Okay. So they're, well, perfect. they're to the point where they're pumping out every week. Uh, and there's a better view of it. It's certainly it's, it's better for the neighborhood, for them, for everybody if, if they connect to the town sewer system. So they are requesting to be annexed. They're already connected to the town's water system. Um, I guess through an accident history, somehow those houses got connected to the water system but not the sewer system. So uh, they are requesting to be annexed into town so they can connect to your town sewer system and uh, we'll be happy to be part of the town of Elkton. Uh, they don't live there. Um, uh, they have a tenant there, a nice tenant there, uh, but um, that's, that's the whole long and short of it. They will well, need to connect to your system. I think, I, I think from uh, my perspective, I'd love to have every one of those houses so that there was a, a defined town of Elton area instead of having some areas that are in the county and some areas that aren't. And I think you eventually will have that because the other houses are going to have the same problem they had eventually. It's just a matter of time. Does anyone from the board have any questions, comments? Hearing none. Okay. Thank you. Jason, you have anything to okay? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lewis, we, Lewis, we have an annexation resolution A2-2019 regarding the above petition for annexation. I think the board uh, should initially move to uh, accept the petition. Do we have a motion to accept the uh, annexation resolution A2-2019 no, for introduction? So move for introduction purposes only. You know, to accept the petition that they, they can be annexed, then we'll subsequently uh, approve the uh, resolution. Okay. Can we accept the petition? Second. We have a second. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. And I think Michelle explained to us that there'll be a hearing probably in January. I think you said in order. There'll be a yes. hearing on January 15th. Okay. Because uh, we have to advertise this sort of thing. We're going to advertise on December 11th and December 18th. Okay. And you'll let us know. If you give me a copy of the bill. We'll go ahead and push you for that. Yep. So January 15th? January 15th. We'll see you then. At 7.05 p.m. Okay. okay. Our building in this room. Okay. Thank, Thank, you very very Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Are we okay to go? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it is 7.10, and we're going to have, uh, we're five minutes behind schedule on our public okay. hearing. Excuse me. You need to accept the annexation oh. resolution A2-219 okay. for introduction. <clears throat> okay, do, so do we have a motion to approve resolution A2-2019 uh, for introduction? So moved. Got a motion second. and a second. Any discussion on the annexation and resolution? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, Gene, it is 7-10. We're going to open up the public hearing, and you're going to give us a progress report on three projects. Yes. And they're behind you. Good Lord, I forgot one of my papers. <laughs> uh, well, let's start with the ADA project. The Town Square ADA project, which is this one. That's the rendering. Um, we applied for a grant, we applied for a grant um, through strategic demolition. Um, and we weren't, for $125,000. We were not funded through strategic demolition, but they sort of handed it off to Community Development Block Grant to fund the project because it included ADA accessibility, which is something that is funded through Community Development Block Grant. So they uh, provided us with a grant for $135,000 to cover the 
it was taking wage rate requirements for the project. So um, with this project, um, we had, bid, had to bid this project out twice. The first time it went out to bid, we received one bid for the project from Priority Construction, and the state told us we had to rebid the project. So we, we bid it out again and received uh, two bids, one from Priority, one from Meadows. Uh, Priority was the lowest competent bidder, but their bid still exceeded the uh, price of the, for the, what we had for construction. We had already bid out the um, um, architectural and engineering work, and Duffield <coughs> did that work for us. So Priority Construction um, was awarded the contract for $100,680 to, um, to um, create handicap accessibility <coughs> from Main Street to the Town Square, from the Town Square to the Alliance Building. They also rebuilt uh, sections of the wall here. Uh, the wall, wall was starting to fail from hydrostatic pressure. Um, they corrected the drainage for that and uh, fixed the wall. Um, they also repaired the stoop, we don't have a photo of that, but the stoop going into the first entrance into the old town hall there. Um, if you recall, it's covered with black plywood. Um, that brick was failing and they repaired that. They installed handrails, these handrails here onto the street from the steps and um, moved the arch and we'll be installing a, a sign for the Alliance. The street sign that was here is going to be moved across the street to, so what, as you're coming down North Street, you'll face it on Main Street, that'll, the directional street sign, you can move over there to a more logical location. It was too far off the street here, you couldn't see it. Um, they're just about finished. Um, <coughs> Dan, um, Hanley, uh, and uh, Duffield have been going through the punch list items. I think the only thing left to do is to paint the railings black and uh, install another railing off to the side. They were going to, they're supposed to paint the railings tomorrow, and they assure me they'll be dry so that nobody will get paint on them on Friday. <laughs> nobody will be paint on their hands Friday when we have the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree will be installed in the center of the circle. So that will be. will happen. There's going to be. Yeah. The tree is no. up. Is it up? No, no, no. The paint will be dry. I'll throw it on the Okay. Guarantee it yourself. Yeah. Okay. So we have. Um, yeah, but I'm not touching it. So. <laughs> so we have a couple of benches that we're going to um, install, and then uh, I think the thought was maybe we would wait till spring to add the additional landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing we're waiting on is there are path lights. There's 12 path lights that will be installed around the circle and around the walkways that are about three feet high to light the walkways. And um, we will not receive delivery of those until early January. It took a long time for the manufacturer to, to make them and send them to us. And so put those in? Uh, we'll either have a contractor do it or, or we'll end the contract with the contractor and have an electrician do it. It's just installing them. The, the, the elect, um, Electrical conduits are already there, and the bases for them are they're ready to go. They just have to make the connections when they get the lights in. So, but I think the, the brick looks great. The contractor also provided us with a cost estimate to complete, um, to finish this area here. This is the original brick sidewalk. It's a little rough. Um, they provided us with a cost estimate if we wanted to, con to finish that work. Do we have the money for that? Uh, well, I haven't responded to the. I just got it today, so I have to look at it, confirm with. I didn't know if we were if we were under budget. No, we're not under budget. We are just at the budget. As a matter of fact, right now we uh, are right at the budget. Actually, we exceeded a little bit because of the lights, but we had we had to pull the lights and the benches and the landscaping out of the original. Um, <coughs> Out of the original contract with uh, priority because their bid was 133,000, and we only had 100,000 in the um, left in the grant, and so we pulled out those items, and uh, we had a couple of benches to put in, and um, we were going to install the lights or, or um, purchase the lights and install them ourselves, or or have them installed. So um, that was sort of a something we had to pull out to get the price down. We still, 
we still have about you know a little bit more work left to do out there um, with the other railing around the, the um, stoop. But it's it, the project looks good. I think I think the brickwork came out really nice, so it should look nice for Friday. Good. I was a little <coughs> nervous about the finishing. <laughs> well, we've been through several, but we've had a lot of several events. Right. You know, we have to deal with this. Um, while we're, can I ask a question yeah. about while we're on the street, you're saying there's some additional work that needs to be done on the on the uh, street, right? For the the sidewalk. sidewalk the brick, yeah. Come this way on um, the opposite, over across the street in front of like Sport or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's areas I noticed walking during all these nighttime. Mm -hmm. Activities, there's all kinds of traps over there can you, to trip over. Dan, can you take a look at all the trap areas? <laughs> I don't know what else to call them other than they're like areas where I guess you have the uh, maybe storm pipe or something there where it's you where, just trip right over. That's a really good point, Dan, because it, it, it's where the water the line, yeah. where the shut off is for the water or the sewer, you just drive by. And, and they're, and they're kind of sunk down a little bit. It is a little bit of a, a trap. Well, I've seen people trip. Well, there you go. It's a liability. So, I mean, I'd like to take a good look at wherever they might be, but I know there's several over there. You know, even if we could just fill it with something that's, you know, safer, rubber or something. It would be interesting to get your. Well, we'll, we'll Thank you. Sure. Thank you. That's all. Mm -hmm. So this project is almost finished, and I think it came out pretty well. And it's uh, pretty close to budget, so. It does look good. Yeah. It needed oh. it. It really, really good. All right. Um, What's so the, the other project is Neighborhood Community Center, and this is a recent photo taken by the town administrator. Um, so it's our. Avery Community Center at 121 Stockton Street. Oh, I'm sorry. Does anybody have any comments? This is actually public for public comment on the Town Square ADA. It's nice. Okay. It's very attractive. Great. Thank you. And that, so the next one is the Neighborhood Community Center. Um, 19,000 square foot building. Uh, we received $800,000 of community development block grant funds. Um, so it's constructed on 2.38 acres of property um, off of Stockton Street. And um, so it'll, it'll include gymnasium space, offices, a kitchen. Um, and let's see, play, there, um, a playground will probably be also developed on the site, a small playground. So it's, um, it will be operated by the Parks and Recreation Department for the residents of the area. Um, uh, Wickersham was a successful um, bidder on the project, a uh, design build. Um, so we were have been working with Wickersham uh, since December of last year on designing the building. Um, and they're to this point where with the design and construction where they've got the foundation, the grading, and the steel up. Um, the invoices were received so far. We've um, expended the full amount of the $800,000 in the CDBG grant. So um, the balance, I think, is is coming from uh, sure. the sewer fund. Um, so it looks like it's it's moving along well. We have biweekly meetings uh, with the uh, contractors with Wickersham and. Um, you know, I think they've been great to work with and the project's moving along nicely. Are there going to be any type of enhancements as you drive down the street and drive into the entrance? Beautification, street, or, or just because, you know, you live where you live and, and it's, it's not it's, it's not scenic driving down, if I can say such. So that's why I say will there be any type of enhancements. <clears throat> um, well, I know that there uh, will be some landscaping along the driveway going into the parking lot. Okay. But as for a streetscape on Stockton Street, not, you know, not the, totally Stockton Street, just maybe the entrance as you get closer to where you're going. 
there is there will be uh, landscape. The parking lot will be landscaped. There's a sidewalk too. And oh, yes. sidewalk. Well, that's that's what I was going to yeah. say. Was there anything going yeah. to happen to address maybe the, the people who live there, like we moved from Tristan? Because you see a lot of different things actually out there. And as I said before, a lot of times you go into the Board of Education from that area there as well. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the site plan did include sidewalks and, and okay. landscaping, but if once it's constructed, if we see that we want to make more improvements or more beautification, landscaping, um, flowering bushes or something, right. we can sure, surely add that. And right, signage? Uh, there's, there will be a sign on the building. I'm sorry? There will be a sign on the yes. building. Hey, Ridge Community Center. Right. Not out by the street, not out by the building. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was probably already. We have a swap well, sign out front, and then there's one on the building itself too. Let's see what's. Yeah, it's like an entrance of some sort. We did a preliminary uh, entrance off of South Street. Where's that coming? Is it? That's uh, on a dormant right now because there's 14 parcels of land that are in that in that corridor. We have to get through. I think I can get someone to donate a few of them tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All good. All right. Very good. Thanks, Dean. Anyone have? Are there any comments on the? Yeah. How many parking spot, spots going to be back there for that? I'd have to pull the site plan out. Um, I know that it met our criteria, I believe, for um, recreation centers. And, and we'll be able to uh, share the parking lot with the uh, crew or the. Uh, Board of Ed. The Board of Ed and also the Credit Union. Mm -hmm. I need to back you on that though with the number of parking spaces. I didn't put the site plan up. All right, Gene. Okay. And so the last one is the, the water tower, the um, Monitor Water Tower, which I I think I printed out my cheat sheet on it and forgot to bring it with me. But the, the water tower is a project that's been completed for a couple of years now. And the way the um, community development block grants um, standards are they you have to have a meeting um, when you apply for the grant you have to have a meeting while the project is underway to uh, to get public comment and in going through my files for this I didn't see that I had a second public hearing on it so I thought well I haven't been monitored on this grant yet but I want to make sure I check off all the boxes so I believe we did said, talk about this at yeah they said if you it doesn't matter if the project's <coughs> closed out have your second public hearing so um, just to make sure I stay on, in good stead with the state, I'm gonna make sure I have my second public hearing. This is a um, 500,000 gallon water tower. I'm sorry? Uh, yes, yeah, 500,000. At, um, at Dogwood Road and, and 213. Mm -hmm. So the Walnut Hill Water Tower. Um, it, we had uh, a study done on this uh, water tower and there, there were some deficiencies. It, it needed to be painted, there, there was some other minor repairs that needed to be made to it. So we applied for and received over $500,000 from CDBG to rehab the water tower. Um, it, it was a nice job, they did a great job on it. We actually came in under budget on that by about $100,000. Um, Katie, I can give you the exact numbers if you're gonna put this in the paper. <laughs> I didn't have my sheet here. But anyway, we came in under budget, and uh, which they were the state liked, um, which saved both us and the state money. Ordinarily, we have a 25% match with these grants. Um, and but I don't know if anyone has any comments on the Walnut Hill Water Tower. All right. Does the board have any questions, comments? Anyone in the audience have any questions or comments? It is 7:25, and this public hearing is closed. Yeah. Thank I'd like you. to comment that the, uh, the structures on top of that uh, tower go on to Sprint and they pay us $24,876 a year uh, for use of that tower. Nice. Very nice. So it's not too, too shabby. <coughs> uh, lease agreement we have with them. That's a great lease agreement. Well, Lou, you were on. Oh, no, let's bring Ed Ginter down. Uh, you want to go with Lewis, you can, it doesn't matter. What's that? You want to go with Lewis, go ahead. All right, Lou, you're on. Let's bring up Dave. Proclamation of the High Alumni Day of the Parent Commission of Mount Elkin to the Elkton High School alumni, which I am one. Uh, whereas the Elkton High School graduated its first class in 1959, my sister was in that class. 
Uh, whereas the Elkton High has grown from a small school of 25 classrooms to a model specialty learning center that educates Elkton community, Elkton community uh, men, young men and women today while learning by preparing them for tomorrow's future. And whereas for over 60 years, thousands of young people have passed through the doors of, of the Elkton High School on their path to adulthood. And whereas the Elkton High School alumni routinely reunite and connect with those who share a very special time in their lives. Now, therefore, on behalf of the Mayor and Commissioners and the citizens of Elkton, we hereby extend our sincere welcome home by providing an annual day of reunion for all Elkton High School alumni. And furthermore, under the authority vested in me as Mayor of the Town of Elkton, I hereby declare the first Friday of October of every year as Elkton High School Alumni Day. Fantastic. Do we have a motion to approve Proclamation P20-2019? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. And I like it that uh, two Bow Manor guys uh, actually were involved in this uh, presentation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't like what I'm saying. I know. Yeah. Uh, any discussion on this proclamation? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. I want to compliment <coughs> Michelle Henson for writing that proclamation. Thank you. It was Thank wonderful. <coughs> We got to get a copy up to the high school. Okay. Uh, new gen. Okay, Steve, you're on. Uh, next one we have is uh, if you recall at, at last week's workshop, we had Ed Donahue and Eric Glokiu from New Gen Solutions and Strategies, and they uh, presented. Uh, they have presented us with a proposal uh, that includes five tasks um, as far as uh, looking at the water billing rate and uh, the water production. Uh, the tasks that they propose to provide is. Uh, updating operating capital costs of the water and sewer systems, uh, update customer and usage data, develop five-year financial plan and updated rates, task forward to update model formatted outputs, and to report uh, on all those tasks before the board. So they have uh, presented a proposal for $19,900 to conduct all of those tasks and present those tasks uh, to, the, to the board. So it's presented to, to accept or not accept their proposal. Uh, do we have a motion to uh, present the new gen strategies and solutions uh, proposal? So we have a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion on it? We had the workshop, and uh, uh, as much as I hate to go through these studies all the time, I think it's uh, something that we need to do every five or six years just to make sure uh, we're, we're on task, and we also need to. Uh, uh, I, I want to make sure about the billing audit and so forth, so it was included into this. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. The next item I have is Resolution R15-2019. I'll read the resolution. A resolution of the Mayor and Commissioner of the Town of Elkton here and after the board, authorizing a loan from the PNC Bank here and after the bank, relating to the acquisition of vehicles and related equipment. Whereas the board in accordance with the charter of the town of Elkton, Article 8C8-3B, is empowered to borrow money for purposes deemed appropriate by the board. Whereas the board on August 7, 2019, by resolution R10-2019, approved the borrowing of $616,000 from the Columbia Bank, currently the Fulton Bank, the repayment of which was based on the amortization period of 60 months at a fixed rate of 2.99%. Whereas the town administrator and the finance director subsequently contacted the PNC Bank to determine the bank would loan the town the principal amount of $656,000, which included the capital purchase of the truck for the Department of Public Works that was included in fiscal year 2020 budget. Whereas the bank agreed to a loan in the principal amount of $656,000 amortized on a 60 month period at a fixed rate of 2.64%. Whereas the board has determined that a loan is set forth here in relating to the acquisition of vehicles and related equipment is in the best interest of the town of Elkton. Now, therefore, the board hereby resolves the following, that the town of Elkton shall finance the acquisition of vehicles and related equipment through a loan from the BNC Bank in the principal amount of $656,000 amortized for a 60-month period at a fixed rate 2.64% with no penalty for prepayment of principal. And the board authorized the mayor to execute all appropriate necessary documents and instruments 
with regard to the aforesaid loan and to further negotiate the terms of the loan, including the amortization period, interest rate repayment and reduction of principal with the DNC Bank as applicable favoring the interest and favoring the interest of the town of Elton. And whereas resolution R10 2019 hereby is rescinded, and this resolution will be effective on the date executed by the board. Essentially what we're doing is borrowing money to pay for capital equipment because the capital equipment has a service life over a period of time. So you, so you spread the borrow the money and spread that debt over the service life of that equipment rather than just one lump sum of money going out for the equipment. So we're recommending that the board uh, adopt this resolution and authorize us to go forward with the loan of, for six hundred fifty six thousand dollars from P and Bank. And Lou, just to be just so the board's aware, we did approve this uh, a couple months ago to move forward with uh, the Columbia Bank or Fulton Bank. And there was a, a few little hiccups uh, that we had uh, working with nothing nothing major, but it was uh, they were asking for uh, uh, a little bit more than we were used to, and uh, the team went over to PNC and actually got a little bit better rate. So that's what that was. Uh, we have a approval for resolution R15-2019. So moved. So moved. So moved. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor. Uh, motion carries. We have a follow up to Jeannie's presentation about the uh, neighborhood community center. I have an update. Uh, we understand the Keystone Steel Structures out of Hunter Grove, Pennsylvania is the company that's actually installing the uh, steel structure itself. It's produced by Newport out of Lancaster. But the uh, steel structures, the Keystone actually builds it. So far, they have uh, put the roof on the lower section, which includes the vapor barrier, uh, R38 uh, value insulation, and, uh, and these metal uh, roof panels. And today, when we were over there, they had already uh, put the vapor barrier uh, across the top section and had started the insulation and uh, roof panels on the upper portion. I would be surprised, uh, given that we have good weather uh, tomorrow, that they, they may finish that upper section tomorrow, if not, maybe Friday, unless it rains real bad and it can't work. You don't usually get up on steel when, it, when it's wet. The uh, company called h &B Plumbing and Heating, if you've ever heard of that company, uh, <laughs> has installed all the drainage uh, in that building for all the restrooms, uh, activity rooms, custodial closet, kitchen, and all that. So all these drains are in there. They have to be put in and at a grade, a certain grade, in order for the slab to be poured, uh, poured and that should come within a few weeks. Uh, Ricker Sham installed the volleyball, I call it net sockets in the gymnasium. The first sign of any sports activity is, uh, is the uh, volleyball uh, things they put in the gym. They have to do that before they pour the slab. It actually set the poles in there for the volleyball net. Of course, so far they won't play as much volleyball as basketball, but uh, it's, it's there and they had to put it in. So, so those uh, floor, I'm sorry. so those floor sleeves for the volleyball net is it the width or is it the length? It's the it's across the uh, it's half court. Yeah, half court. It's the width. Okay, yeah. okay. Full, full court. And they ha it has a cover over it, so when right. it's out, the, you know, metal you know, cover. Yeah. <coughs> those uh, those poles will. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but those poles will be permanently embedded in the concrete. No, take them out. Put them in. Play volleyball. Take them out. Cover the back on. You're gone. That's it, just because we don't want to mess up the basketball aspect of that building. It's not like you and Rob are going to play basketball and run around the poles. That's what we used to have Basketball. Have you seen me stand up? <laughs> Actually, a lot of gyms had the sleeves in there when they were built, but as time went on, they had them taken out because they became hazards with the metal covers over them. Ours are like a great at the, the four things, so they're theoretically they're both yeah, pretty four. good. Okay. You know. If they're not, I'll beat those words yeah. but, uh, right now. Meadows is already, uh, we've closed Auction Street shortly in order for Meadows to dig up the water sewer and gas lines to, so we can locate both the, uh, where they are geographically and at depth. So the next step, uh, Meadows will be to connect to those systems. But right now they had to do ident identify the locations. Mary's met with Comcast. And they'll run a Comcast, we'll have Comcast service run from Stockton Street. The electrician will run conduit in, in order for us to have 
both Comcast phone and uh, internet service. Wickersham is providing a 125 kW generator for the building, and this generator will will actually power the entire building, including HVAC systems and everything else. When the as part of the $800,000 we got from DHCD, they require us to have this building available in an emergency. Obviously, if you're going to have uh, people in there, you got to have both the light and all the systems in place, including ventilation and air conditioning and heating. So the generator will be part of the project. Total price of the project today, including three change orders, is three million five hundred sixty-four thousand two hundred forty dollars. Cost of the project today, including payments and retainage, is one million three hundred thirty-nine thousand two hundred forty-nine dollars. As Gene said, we've already expended this eight hundred thousand. CDBG money. Quicker Sham is still targeting June 2020 for opening. So there's nothing uh, nothing in front of that right now unless we have some really bad weather. Uh, we have a progress meeting today and um, we're going to do for the slab within the next few weeks, hopefully. Uh, the first four will be for the gym, that's the most critical uh, because of the, it has to be perfect. And then subsequent to that, the, the slab will be poured for the remaining portions of the building. They have a, a contractor out of, I think they're out of Wilmington to do that. So that's, that's the update on right now. Thank you, Lou. That's, uh, I think that's all I have. <coughs> uh, Ed Gander, Vice President of Shop for a Cop, you want to come on down and tell us a little bit about the event? <coughs> tell us when the event is and what you're looking for and what we need to do. On behalf of Shop for the Cop, I'd like to thank Mayor Cal for the opportunity to come before you. Uh, Jimmy Russell wants to apologize because he had an emergency and he could not make it tonight. Uh, we are running our Shop of the Cop January 14th. It starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. Last year we had 104 children who participated in the event. The procession of uh, law enforcement uh, vehicles, we had 97 vehicles plus some emergency vehicles that, that filled in. What I'm here before you is to request a uh, route that we'd like to use from the Singley Fire Hall to the Walmart on Route 40. Uh, I think you have a copy of that in front of you. Uh, if you have any questions on that, we'd come out of Singley Fire Hall, take a right, go up to uh, 213 at the intersection, take a left, go all the way down to Main Street, take a left on the Main Street, Go out to Delaware Avenue, take a right on to Delaware Avenue, out to Route 40, take a left and up to Walmart. And if possible, we'd like to use that same route coming back. Duplicate the same way. Ed, the uh, que question we kind of talked about here, uh, uh, last year when I, when I came back here and asked you, uh, why couldn't we go down Howard Street and we wouldn't have to worry about going back the, the opposite way onto Main Street? Uh, <clears throat> what what was the feeling with the the uh, merchants? I mean, was there is is this something that they were excited about? Or yes, we we, we <coughs> got a lot of lot of uh, positive response from the merchants. They were standing out in front of their stores, and people who were shoppers came out to see what was going on. So it was good exposure. Rob, do you remember that at all last year? I do. Yeah, there were a lot of people milling around. It was nice seeing you come down the street. We had discussed you guys possibly coming back down Howard Street. There are merits both ways, I see. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more visible if you come down Main Street. How much of an inconvenience it is. Would it take like 10 minutes, you say, to come down? Yeah, d d depending how long the procession takes it. You're, you're talking 97 vehicles of, of law enforcement vehicles that sit at, uh, just alone. And that's not including maybe a fire engine and, and ambulance or anything like that. So, what are your thoughts on coming down Howard Street on the way back? It's up to the good grace of the council. Whatever you want, we'll we'll, we'll oblige to what you want. I I, I I like the route going out and I like it coming back. But if, if there's some, some concern about coming back, bucking traffic on Main Street and using Howard Street, so be it. Well, well. well Mayor, do we have do we have time? Can I do a survey along Main Street? <coughs> Chief, how do you feel about 
Don't matter. We, okay. we're, we're here for traffic control uh, during the event, so if, if you want to allow it to come back uh, uh, opposite direction on Main Street, uh, we'll, we'll certainly assist in making that happen. And well, I would say I, I would say this that uh, we will not be meeting again until after the event. He says December 14th. So I would say <coughs> um, if, if we wanted to give Rob a little time to, that's next year. That's what he said. He said January. How do you guys feel about it? Yeah. 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 Rob to look into it, or do you want to just say December yeah. Street? December 14th. Okay. Here's, here's what we're going to do is we're going to give the authority to Rob Aspiner to make his decision. And uh, Rob, you're in charge of the decision. But, but please let Ed Hinder and well, let staff know uh, first and foremost uh, after you speak to the merchants and, and make sure it's not a hindrance during that 10 minute time on December 14th. Are you good with that, Ed? Whatever. Okay. Uh, also, uh, <clears throat> talk to Chief, and uh, they're going to participate as far as traffic control. I already we already have the fire police lined up to assist with law enforcement, uh, and uh, we have a special guest that's also going to appear that day. The Philly fanatic will be appearing, so we're going to try to make it a good uh, good Christmas for the for the children. So. Uh, any questions? Now, Ed, when, when the uh, parade of vehicles uh, leave and come back, of course, the children are in the cars also. Yes, along with the chaperones. Okay. And, and the invitations that open to all, any of you that want to participate, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to be there in the morning for opening ceremonies. And also, if you want to serve the chaperone, ride along in one of the, one of the law enforcement vehicles, you're more than welcome to. It's, it's a good good experience. So what time does this begin? At 7 o'clock, the uh, law enforcement will start arriving. We, we meet with them. And then at 8 o'clock is when we start to sign the children to the, to the officers. And it is December 14th. December 14th, I'm sorry. I, I said January. It's December 14th. Thanks. Any questions? Thank you, Ed. No, no, thank you. And let's I think see. the board uh, should make a formal uh, motion to accept this if it's going to be closed Main Street. If you're not going to go to Main Street, it's just a public street using normal routes of traffic. But if you're going to change that, you actually should uh, make a decision about whether you're going to do that or not. Putting a lot of pressure on us. You're taking away Rob's ability to make a decision. <laughs> if you do it as contingent. Why are you stepping on me, Lewis? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that uh, it's a, it's, I think Ed would like to walk away you know, and say, yeah, this is what we're doing. Cause we, down. Okay, can we have a, uh, well, we'll do this. Can we have a motion to uh, uh, reverse the traffic on Main Street for the parade contingent upon Rob Massimano's decision? That's fine. How's that sound? That we can sort of take care of it in the next two days. All right, do we have, we have a motion and a second? Any discussion? Then what well, our intent of this is that if Rob gives a green light, we've already voted in favor of changing it. All right, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. A lot of pressure on your own. Thank you. Thank you, Ed, for all you do. Okay. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention was that uh, uh, coming into the uh, December schedule, uh, the town board will not meet on the 4th. We will not meet on the 11th. We're only going to have one meeting in December, which will be on December the 18th, Wednesday. Uh, that will um, make our charter requirements that we only got one meeting in December, and that will be on December 18th. Uh, December 4th, I'm looking forward to, I think the board is looking forward to going to this small business person of the year. Uh, that's on a Wednesday night, uh, so it would be uh, exciting about going to that. Um, and that's at... Uh, Sinking Springs. Sinking Springs. Sinking Springs. Uh, this Friday, of course, we have the lighting of the tree. Dan, thanks for getting that up. Looking forward to that. Uh, Coach Feeney, uh, it, uh, I asked him before the meeting, and uh, we asked him to be our special light switcher on the, that evening. And uh, you got to remember, they got a little bit of a ritual that they do coaching, uh, uh, and it cuts a little bit into that time and, and uh, he was honored that we asked uh, but he couldn't 
he couldn't do it on Friday, of course. Um, I welcome everyone to go to the Elton football game on Friday. The game's at 7. I'd like to fill the, uh, fill the bleachers if we could. That'd be great. Uh, next up, I wanted to thank uh, Sue Whitaker from Sue's Quilt Studio for making us all a nice, beautiful Christmas bulb up here today, if anyone saw that. <clears throat> Very nice. Maybe we can put one on the, uh, the new tree out here. You can take that one and put it on the tree. There's an extra one. Is there an extra one? Very good. And uh, I think everyone saw the last thing I had, I think everyone saw in the paper that Immaculate Conception School, um, it's a very good chance that uh, this could be their last school year. Uh, there's uh, uh, some concerned parents and uh, uh, that are, are trying to mount uh, uh, some effort to do what they can to keep the school open. And uh, it's going to be a struggle. Uh, enrollment's down. Uh, you've got uh, uh, competitive uh, Catholic churches in the area. And uh, it's uh, going to be a real struggle uh, to be able to keep uh, the school open. But uh, I know that uh, there's uh, many people trying. So uh, we'll know a little bit more by the December 18th meeting of whether that's going to happen or not. Yes, sir. To that end, I was in the <coughs> Acme this morning, and they are working with the Immaculate Conception, asking people to donate at the register when you check out. Oh, very nice. <coughs> very nice. Okay, Rob, you're on. That was it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> 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 right. I just have one thing to remind everyone of December the 13th, uh, the dance recital at Elton High School at 6 o'clock for the uh, Parks and Rec. It shouldn't be a real long one because uh, it said it should be a short recital, but if you can come out with me, we're about to have you by 10. December 13th, 6 o'clock, Dalton High School. Earl, uh, and how's the arm feeling? Oh, so, great. All right, I wanted everyone to know that Earl got uh, in a fight. He <laughs> <laughs> <Eight and one. laughs> <Eight and laughs> won. Charles? <laughs> The Lord Shoe Center is another, well, first, it's unfortunate for many hands to be closing, or has closed. And Lord Shoe Center is another stating that there's going to be an auction. Yes. So will that auction within be, a week today. Yeah, will that au au auction be contingent upon getting a certain amount of money in order for the sale to take place, or it's going to be an auction, period? It's a public auction. And okay. It's already you know, gone forward. Okay. I'm just curious. I'm done. Gene? Um, the only question. Um, decorating contest. Have we gotten anybody signed up? I don't know that anyone signed up yet, but we have it out on uh, our Facebook and our website, and then um, Parks and Recreation created it as an event, so that um, people can sign up online as well. And, and maybe we could get Katie to do an interview with you and talk a little bit about the uh, decorating. Parks and Rec. Chaney would do a great oh, job. Oh, perfect. Chaney would be a great one. We have to pick a time to all go out. <coughs> and the deadline's the uh, 13th, so that's that gives the board that weekend to um, go visit the, um, the registered properties. Thank I'll you. drive the truck around for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. All right. Anything else? Yeah. I just was curious to see how many people we had signed up because if we don't have many people sign up, I, we talked last year about just going through the town, not having to register. So I think um, you can make that decision between now and then, right? Where we're at. That's all I have. Very good. That's a good idea. This is the. Uh, yeah. 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 Make sure. He said he had something. This is the time of the meeting we open up the floor for anyone to say anything for the good of the community. Mr. Dwight Hare? I just want to ask a question. Uh, I'm interested in how you're doing this PNC thing. And uh, Are you doing a line of credit there? Don't you do a line of credit? No, it's a loan. It's a loan. It's so a loan. you take the whole money at one time? Yeah, we're, re the, we're reimbursing ourselves for what we've already spending. Oh, I see. Okay. The, uh, I find that PNC is starting to be a little more cooperative than is uh, the new Fulton Bank. 
they went from almost needing to cancel their daytime program to exceeding their um, ava availability for students. So um, their program is growing uh, with the exposure of the neighborhood. Um, so little by little, the matter is no longer going to be said with those nasty little <laughs> connotations to it because we're up and coming. We're, we're going to be a premier neighborhood before we're done. So, be nice. Uh, for you. Very good. So, Thank you, Sarah. And you will have some of our houses in that contest for the Perfect. decoration. <coughs> We're just looking discussing forward it to today. It. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone? Yes, Mr. A. Gander. I, I, I failed to mention uh, we are meeting tomorrow night the board of directors to review well over 200 applications from children who are referred from the social department, social services department, other uh, social service departments. The elementary school guidance counselors, they all refer these children to us. We review them, we narrow it down. Uh, sometimes we have repeat children coming back year after year, so we try to get as many new children as we possibly can. Each of the chaperones or law enforcement officers are given a list of the size of clothing that the children would wear, uh, the top kind of toys that they would want, and uh, they're allowed to spend up to $300 each for each child. <coughs> Very good. All right. It is uh, almost eight o'clock. This meeting is adjourned. Can I get in that?